You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello, and welcome to episode 180 of the Soul Forge Podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, everybody. It's Sean here with Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Sean. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Good. So what we're doing is we're pulling a complete 180 because normally on the podcast, we talk about life, the universe, and everything. And to switch it up a little bit, I thought this week we would talk about death rituals, burial rites, and so on. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Because as you know, the Soul Forge podcast is talking about things that people don't normally talk about. And one of the things that people are most afraid to talk about is death and dying. So we're not going to talk about dying. We're going to say, we're already dead. So what are we going to do with our corpses, with our rotting bodies? What kind of ritual are we going to do? What we thought we would do be uh, to, to bring up this topic, I guess, is look up some different kinds of burial rituals before we talk about what we would like for ourselves. Because you and I have never talked about this, have we? No. No, that's right. So we each pulled up an article, and uh, I guess what we'll do is we'll just we'll go through them. I'll go through one, and then you'll go through one on your list, and then I'll go through one on my list, and we'll see uh, what we come up with. We can talk about them as we go. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Sounds good? Sounds good. Okay. So, the first one that I came up with was something called burial beads, where you turn the dead into colorful beads. And according to the article that I found, many people in South Korea opt to compress the remains of the dead person into gem-like beads in different colors, which are then displayed at home. Is that something you would like to do? No. No? I don't think so. You don't want to turn get yourself turned into a colorful bead? No, but I think if I had a loved one... That would want that, I think I would Okay, so have it in my house. So say it's uh, 50 years from now and all of a sudden I died and I want it to be turned into colorful beads. How would you feel about displaying my dead body in colorful beads around the house? I don't know. I don't know if it would make me feel like I'm not letting go. Uh, like you're still, you're still I'm, present. Right, I'm still hanging around. Yeah, so having the beads in the house. As a daily reminder. Yeah. Because it feels like you can't move on. Yeah, as if you're buried, you know, you're six feet under the ground. Mm-hmm. You're, you're gone. You're, you're gone. Your tombstone is there. Yeah, so you could visit and if you wanted to. Yeah. But it's not at your house. No, but it's not at my house. So you'd have to make a special trip out to the graveyard to go visit the person. Yes. You don't have to be reminded daily that they're there. No. Okay, that's fair. What do you got on your list? There's the plastination which is the body is a process of removing all liquids from the body, so sucking it dry, allowing only tissue mass to remain, preserving it and preventing the body from decaying. The body is then turned into plastic like a mannequin, and it's used for educational purposes. Uh, You know what? Uh, Last year, I took my son Bishop to Science North, where they had a huge display of all kinds of plastination of different parts of the body. So it was, uh, it was quite, the, uh, quite the experience. I don't think I talked about it on the podcast before, but uh, they, they either cut the body into slices or they, they just show what the skeletal structure is or just the capillaries in the hand or what the heart looks like uh, really up close and inside out. It was all kinds of different things. It was, it was creepy but fascinating at yeah, the same I time. Yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah. So I, what was that called? I can't remember what it was called, but Body Works or, or something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'd go see that. So is that something you'd want to do? You want to donate yeah, your body to science? No, I would not no, donate my body to science. That's not something you want to do? No. Okay. I don't think so. All right. Well, what about uh, endo-cannibalism? 
or eating the dead. And, and yeah, in the old days, the Melanesians of Papua New Guinea and the Wari people of Brazil would eat the dead in order to expel the fear and mystery that surrounds the concept of death. The Yanomani people also practice this. Hmm. Is that something you want to do? You want to eat no. your dead person? No. No. That's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, I guess it's normal because well. people do it, but yeah, it's not something that we're used to. No, I no. wouldn't do that. No, good. Okay, good. What else do no. you got for me? Crisis for the geek kind. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? Join Weeby Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to Weeby Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at WeebyGeeks.net. Weeby Geeks, your voice for the Geek Revolution. Want to know more? Memorial diamonds. Oh, yes. Ooh. The memorial diamonds are made by pressuring the hair or ashes of the deceased in the same way real diamonds are made, but quicker. So basically, you can have your loved one in a diamond. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that before. I didn't know that existed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had no clue. Yeah, you, you take the dead person and they're... Because we're made out of carbon and diamonds are made out of carbon. So you just compress it into like some kind of super duper device that just crushes it right down and then you have yourself a diamond so you could wear your dead person on a ring yeah i think um well i guess it's the same thing as carrying a person's ashes on you in a locket right Mm -hmm. exactly so i always said if i had a loved one i would pass away i would take the ashes and actually put it in a locket Mm -hmm. but then having it made into a diamond is the same thing yeah pretty much see i'm not comfortable with that but it's the same thing right no, I, I get that. It, it's it's similar because uh, when when my son passed away sixteen years ago, they they took some uh, some hair of his, and uh, both his mom and his grandmother have hair in a locket. It, oh, it, wow. it, yeah, it's a thing that people do. Uh, another thing that people do is once every seven years, the Malagasy people of Madagascar exhume the bodies of loved ones, wrap them in cloth, and dance with the corpse sacks. It probably smells pretty bad, so they spray it with wine and tell stories of their families. You want to dance with some dead bones? No, thanks. Okay. How about uh, buried in a fantasy coffin? In Ghana, people like to be buried in something that represents their lives. These include coffins shaped like planes for pilots, fish for fishermen, and a Mercedes for a businessman. Mm. Would, would, you, would you like a themed coffin? A themed coffin? A themed coffin. Like, like you're, you're a nurse, so you could be buried in some kind of... Uh, nurse type coffin yeah well that if, represents if, yeah if the, if the money's there mm-hmm. I mean Cause I now, don't see why not now this brings up something that I've wanted for years and years I, I don't think I've told you about this story um, in, in Star Trek 2 Spock dies and they shoot his body th- in a torpedo tube onto a planet of my friend I can only say this of all the souls I have encountered in my travels this was the most human. And so what a company did was they started making coffins shaped like torpedo tubes so that Star Trek fans could be buried in torpedo tube coffins. And that's something that I've always wanted to do. I, I, think, I think they're relatively expensive, and I don't know if they still make them, but it's like a, a two-meter-long coffin shaped like an explosive device. Really? <laughs> from a sci-fi fantasy series. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I think it was the Mark Seven torpedo tube. So oh. so that's something that I would do. Well, I know before in the past, when I had written my will when I was younger, I didn't like the idea of being buried in the ground right. and getting eaten by the bugs and everything else. My mom used to say the same exact I, thing. I don't like that. And then cremated Ouch! Like you're gonna be burnt. Right. And, that that was that was another thing. I I, I I don't like the idea of that. So. I had uh, said that I wanted to be buried in those houses. Like a mausoleum? Yes. So you put the coffin so in the stone. So the bugs stone. can't get to me. Right. I know your body's going to end up making... Decomposition. Yeah. Yeah. But 
the bugs are not going to get to me. Not in I'll the be ground. laying there peacefully and nothing bothering me and I'm on top of the surface. Yeah. Not in the ground. Right. And you're protected by the stone building. Yes. Okay. Okay. How about uh, the Tibetan sky burial? So it, it, this here says that many, uh, especially Buddhists, sometimes cut the body up into pieces and leave them on a hill for the birds to feast on because the Buddhists see dead bodies as empty vessels and consider these sky burials an act of charity and compassion. And it's kind of like recycling because you come from the earth, you go back to the earth, mm-hmm. right? Or uh, also in Papua New Guinea, they have something called the finger amputation. Uh, the Dani people... Uh, the death of a loved one meant that any women and children related to the deceased had to cut off some of their fingers. And this was done to drive away spirits, but now banned. So, mm. Even they can have vinyl compressions. What, what kind? Vinyl. Oh, vinyl compressions. Vinyl compression. Oh, is that where they turn it into a record? Yes. Oh, my God. I've heard of that. They yeah. take They take the ashes or something? Read, yeah, they take the ashes. Read, read what it says there. And it says, this is a great idea for a late music lover. This service allows your ashes to be compressed into vinyl record of your favorite tune, or the most irritating tune ever if you have a sadistic side. You can even leave a voice message for loved ones to play so you can speak from the grave. Wow. Messed up, if you ask me. But each of their own. Stick me on a dire straight record and I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like that. You, you know, I, I could add you to my record collection. I don't know, like, because um, I know, like, I have one grandma. She actually passed away, and before she passed away, we had sang a song together. Okay, and you, I you, still you. have that video. Oh, you and her sang it together? Yes. We had sung You Are My Sunshine. Uh-huh. And she had dementia. So if I go back to that video, I just have a hard... I don't know, it's me that has a hard time with death, right? So it's... um, Have you watched the video yet? Yes. And that's okay? It's okay, but um, I wasn't as close to that grandma as to the one that I have presently Mm -hmm. suffering from dementia. Mm -hmm. So if I was to, I don't know, compare videos, I guess. You could put both grandmas on a vinyl record. Yeah, I don't know if I'd like that. Like, to hear the voice again? Coming out of Because then I would, I would have a hard time letting go. Right. I guess I knew it because the letting go part, I... Because these are all re- uh, reminders. Yeah. Uh, even though I have my grandma and my grandpa's ashes in my house. Right. In a little urn. Okay. You know? Yeah. The whole ashes or part of it? Part of the ashes. Okay. Yeah, we had distributed it in the family. Yeah. So everybody got a... A little bit of the ashes. I'm fine with that. Well, just like my mother was a huge collector of Tetley tea. Yes. Um, what an experience uh, that was, meeting your mom for the first time. Right, right. <laughs> okay, yeah. Here's here's a cool story for our listeners. So my mom was a huge collector. When you bought Tetley tea, you could take the UPC codes and send them into the company, and they would give you collectibles. I don't think they do that anymore, but she had so many Tetley tea collectibles because all she did was drink tea. So anyway, when she passed away, what I wanted to do when I got my portion of her ashes, I put her in one of the little mini Tetley tea pots that she had collected. (laughs) Little did I know. Little did you know. I went into your kitchen one day and we were cleaning up and I grabbed this Tetley tea thing and I said, is this still good? This is my mom, Julie. I almost <laughs> fell to the ground. <laughs> yeah, you did. Because <laughs> I honestly did not expect that at all. <laughs> well, why would you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kept my mom in the kitchen where she liked to drink oh, tea. Yeah. So it was a thing. Yeah, but it was the weirdest feeling. Yeah, because you never met her. I had it in my hands, and I was like, is this still good? Right, because you never met her when she was alive. No. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> there was that. Uh, now, another burial ritual, or death rite, I guess here, is what you call the Cavatino tree burial. Uh, the Cavatino, who live near Manila, bury their dead in a hollowed-out tree trunk. The tree is selected a while before the person's death. So it's, I guess it's almost kind of like um, recycling, because your body decomposes and feeds the tree. Hmm. And and there, there's people, uh, I think... Yeah. In, like getting buried under a tree? Like in North America, there's something, I, I couldn't find it in, in my research, but 
you can become a tree because you're whatever part of you. They they put it in some kind of tube or a sack or something, and they and they bury it under a tree, and they and it, it feeds the tree. Hmm. I, I didn't explain that very well, but there's interesting. Yeah, so that's a thing. What else you got on your list? Uh, you can get turned into fireworks. Ooh, really? Yes. That does sound exciting. As we have seen, there are many imaginative, expressive, and experimental ways to spread someone's ashes and bury them, but this is the most explosive. So ashes are simply added to fireworks and bang. Um, a colorful and quick goodbye. That's not bad. And, and I found something similar to what I was trying to say earlier. Uh, environmental friendly burial. In this method, you skip the embalming processes and get biodegradable woven willow caskets which decompose into the ground. Similar to feeding the trees or whatever, but you just decompose and like, like a, a rotting insect which feeds the ground, it's a similar thing. And then uh, we've got uh, the Zoroastrian vulture funeral. The corpse is washed with bull urine, after which it is visited by a holy dog, or Sagold. It is then placed atop the Tower of Silence, where it's swiftly devoured by vultures. These vultures seem to be getting pretty well fed. Another one here from North America, Haida Totem Pole Funeral. The Haida people of North America had a special ritual for the death of a chief or shaman. The body would be crushed to a pulp with clubs and put in a suitcase box. The box would then be placed in a mortuary totem pole in front of the deceased person's house. Hmm. So you got any more on your list? My list is done. Um, well, there's the home burial, which is... Although ground burials are the most popular way to be buried, doing it at home are not as common. However, some families prefer this method of burial because they feel close to their late family members. But the question is, and you never fully get over their death. Right, because they're always there. Yeah. Now, this, this is the thing that... And I think that's the part, too, why I say, like, if somebody close to me would pass away, then I would keep some of the ashes and put it, let's say, in a locket. Because mm-hmm. I'm not ready to let go of that person. I think that's, that would be the reason why I'd want to keep it. Right. Is that I'm not ready to let go of that person, and I want that person to be with me each and every day, right? Of course, the closeness. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like uh, like having your dog stuffed after it dies. People do that, you know. So you always have that pet. Like yeah. you, I don't think you'd want to stuff a person. No, but, but I had looked into um, having my dog that I put down last year cremated and put her like in a a locket. In a in a, it's like a, a jar, like a, a, a urn room. or whatever mm-hmm. for dogs. Mm-hmm. But um, that can be quite expensive. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So she she got buried. There she goes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the, the most common types of burials for us here in North America and in Canada, of course, is either just being straight buried or cremated. Uh, we're not Vikings, so we don't get a funeral pyre or shipped out off on the boat into the lake or whatever. But often I, I, I've... Well, I don't know how often, but I- I've thought about it over the years, what I want done with my body. And you have too, obviously. You don't want to be buried because the bugs are going to get you. You don't want to be cremated because you're going to burn up in the fire. So you want to be stuck in some kind of a, a building, like a mausoleum. Yeah, if it's, if, it's, if it's affordable, but if it's not, then I said that I want to be buried in the ground. Then I just I was like, okay, i got to let go of the fears, I guess, or whatever, and just you know you're get not, buried. Because and... you're not conscious when that happens. Well, yeah, I know. That's so. what the lawyer was saying, like... But anyhow, I'd be buried in the ground. So you'd rather be buried than cremated? Yes. Okay. And, and I've thought about it over the years, too. Other than being buried in a torpedo tube, I, I don't have any preference. Whatever the, the loved one who is left to take care of me wants to do, I'm good with. I don't care. Have a, have, I'd, like, I'd like a big fancy funeral with a parade downtown and everything, but if that doesn't happen, do whatever you want. I don't care. Cremate me, bury me. Actually, like uh, the, the actor who played Scotty on Star Trek, he had his ashes uh, flown up on the space shuttle and launched into space. That would be epic. I would love to have that. If I can't have a torpedo tube coffin, I want to have my ashes uh, scattered into space. That would be amazing. But then you're everywhere. That would be fantastic. And then I wouldn't have. Then the person wouldn't have a place to go. You, you could still have a marker. Right? You could still have a marker. Yeah. Or something. Because when, when you go to the graveyard, the person's not actually there anymore. No, but you know the body's there. The, the body's there. <laughs> That's true. So, so if your ashes is thrown just everywhere... You could always keep a piece back. Like, I've got a part of my mom, and the rest we, we put in the lake with her parents. Because 
Yeah, because about an hour and a half from where we grew up in the Sioux, we went camping all the time at Beals Lake on the Shaplow Highway. And so a few years back, uh, we, we took mom's ashes and the grandparents' ashes and released them into the lake because that was where we went camping when I was a child and they'd gone for years before that. They're all together in the mm-hmm. lake, except for the part that I kept. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, in conclusion, I really don't care. <laughs> it, uh, it's up to the person who's left behind to take care of it. Would I like a huge kind of um, big fancy kind of to-do? Yes, of course. But I'm not going to be around to see it, so it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about this topic? It's, it's... Something that people don't talk about. Yeah. So I, yeah. Thought, I thought on episode 180 we would turn it right around and talk about death instead of life this time. I didn't even know all these burials. Right. Alternatives existed. Yes. And we didn't even get into like uh, ancient Egyptian sarcophagus and pyramids and uh, how, how uh, archaeologists find the, the bones of um, Neanderthals and stuff and uh, the peat bog bodies. Have you heard of those? No. That's, um, I, th- I think that's in Scotland or, or somewhere over there anyway, where uh, they, they're finding a lot of bodies in peat bogs or, or swampy type places, and they've been there for thousands of years, but it almost looks like they only died last year, because, wow. because whatever is in the thing sucks out the moisture and preserves the body. It's funny, but I always said I would be interested on digging up a coffin, like let's say my, my grandpa that I've never met. Mm-hmm. And just look up the coffin and see what it looks like inside. Right. I'd be curious to know after all these years. You wouldn't be creeped out? Maybe I would, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would, but I would, uh, I want to see what it looks like. Because death holds a fascination and a curiosity for people. Yeah. That's why we make so many scary movies. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, joining me on this topic. You're welcome. Okay, listeners, I hope you uh, had fun listening to this. It's a bit of a different show, but it's episode 180, so we had to turn it around for you. So I hope you'll uh, continue to listen, share the links, uh, support us on Coffee. The link is in the show notes. Uh, leave a five-star review in the podcatcher of your choice. And until next time, remember, sometimes we fall down because there is something down there we're supposed to find. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links, and don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. The human body reflects our innermost nature. Its growth and decline, its external beauty, and the fascination of its inner organs have aroused man's curiosity for centuries. A marvel of functionality, and then sudden death. In its long history, anatomy has repeatedly attempted to fully grasp the processes in the human body, hoping both to understand its incredible detailed workings and develop new remedies. Thanks to the plastination technique, a body's internal structure can now be durably displayed in a way that is more fascinating and more aesthetic than ever before. The plastination technology was invented by Gunther von Hagens in 1978, and ever since then he has devoted his life to it, further developing plastination to its current advanced state. Authentic human bodies, dissected and plastinated, by anatomists, tangible and comprehensible. These are the bodies of donors. During their lifetimes, they decided to leave their bodies for plastination to help train and educate physicians and medical laypersons. So how does plastination work? Usually, the body has been dead for two to three days when it reaches the Institute for Plastination. First, formalin is applied to stop decomposition. Then the further steps and type of preparation are carefully planned. Certain types of plastinates require different techniques and polymers. Plastination of an entire body takes several weeks. To properly expose the structures, great care is needed. They have to be perfect. After all, the finished specimens are primarily intended for demonstration and instruction in training medical students. After dissection, the plastination process begins. The bodies are first dehydrated in acetone. 
The specimens are then impregnated with silicone in a refrigerated vacuum chamber. During this process, a vacuum pump effervesces the acetone out of the body, creating a vacuum in the tissue. And that allows the plastic to be gradually sucked into even the most minute cells. After vacuum impregnation, the specimen has to be set in the desired pose. Once the pose is fixed, all the anatomical structures, each and every nerve and vessel, has to be set in the correct position. A complicated process involving ropes, wires, foam pads, and needles. Designing, in particular, is an intellectual and artistic achievement. Needing a process of strategic planning and careful reviews during implementation to ensure the end result is aligned with the overall image. With new and complex specimens, it often takes weeks until the pose of the plastinate finally harmonizes with the anatomical dissection. Producing a whole body plastinate requires an average of 8 to 12 months. Work on the rearing horse with rider took over three years. In the final stage, the plastinate is cured using gas and heat in an airtight chamber. The structures are then all irreversibly solidified. Renaissance artists and scientists knew about mortality. Death was ever-present. In today's world, death and physicality are being increasingly repressed. Death has been banished from our consciousness. An encounter with a dissected body can be a moving experience. It can teach us to appreciate this unique wonder, while at the same time reminding us how transitory life is. Gunter von Hagens has so far developed over 20 polymer compounds for various applications in plastination. For example, in sheet plastination. Sheet plastination permits the body to be shown in cross-section. The structure becomes visible, layer by layer, making the position of the organs and individual deviations clear. Such knowledge is indispensable, for instance, in utilizing computer-aided tomography. For sheet plastination, the specimen is first fixed with the aid of a laser level. It is then frozen in acetone at minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit and foamed with polyurethane. Finally, special precision saw blade settings allow millimeter thin slices to be taken. After dehydration in acetone, the slices are rigidly plastinated in an epoxy resin solution. Curing is via ultraviolet light. Every person is unique, but our uniqueness is not only expressed in our visible outward appearance, no two bodies are exactly alike inside either. The position, size, form and attributes of the skeleton, musculature, nerves and organs determine the features of our inner face. This anatomical individuality could never be conveyed by models. Models are only an interpretation, and one model looks like any other. Conversely, the authenticity of these specimens fascinates viewers, while allowing them to experience humankind as a marvel of nature. Body Worlds is devoted to the individual inner face of the human being. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the T Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.